The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading for Thanksgiving Sunday is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, verses 25 to 33. I would invite you to pause this video and to read this reading from your own Bible or by following the link you'll find in the description of this video. This week in Matthew's Gospel, we uh, hear a passage about riches and our attachment to them. Matthew often gathers Jesus' teachings by theme, and so there's a definite continuation of Jesus' message from the previous verses. Just before our reading today, Jesus said, No one can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. So our reading today builds on that addressing one of our most common human responses to the uncertainty of life, worry. In today's passage, Jesus directly addresses the, that common human inclination to worry, particularly about our material needs, what we eat and what we drink and what we will wear. He gently challenges us by pointing to the natural world as an example of God's provision. The birds of the air don't sow or reap, yet they are fed. The lilies of the field don't toil or spin, yet they are clothed in beauty. Jesus reminds us that if God cares so abundantly for creation, how much more will God care for us, God's beloved children? The message is clear. Worrying about these things will not change our circumstances. I know. What? Me worry? Now, who among us doesn't? Of course we worry. I worry. We all worry about something. Our families, our health, our jobs, our kids, our country, and even our planet. Worry is one of our most human responses. At its worst, we worry, worry can consume us and make us sick. Even in more modest doses, it often feels like a make-work project, something we do while we wait for things outside of our control to resolve themselves. Jesus points out the futility of worry, saying, Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? Jesus offers a better way. Instead of letting worry take up space in our hearts and minds, he encourages us to use that energy for something far more life-giving, striving for God's kingdom. Jesus says in our passage, strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Now, it's one of my go-to lines, but I'll say it again, that Jesus wants us to put God at the center of our lives. He wants nothing to come ahead of God in our striving. And when we do that, it transforms how we think, act, and prioritize. Suddenly, the things that once took center stage, possessions, goals, even our worries, no longer hold us captive. Instead, when God is at the center, everything else falls into perspective. And with God at the center, we find that we are no longer overly attached to our possessions. Instead, we're ready and eager to share with those in need. With God at the center, we worry less about whether we'll have enough, trusting that God provides what we truly need. When we live this way, striving first for God, we are living in the kingdom of God. Now, it isn't easy, of course. Putting God at the center requires that we let go of one thing at a time, making more and more room for God to work. But the more space we create, the more balanced our life becomes. The more we trust God, the less we worry. And the more we trust that God is working in our lives and in the lives of others. 
Now, it wasn't included in today's reading, but the very next verse from Matthew's Gospel says, So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. Now that is a wise reminder. So today, let's begin. This Thanksgiving weekend, as we celebrate the bounty of what God has provided, let us also reflect on the abundance that God provides for us every day. And not just food, but peace, hope, and love. The harvest we celebrate today is a testament to God's faithful provision, reminding us that when we focus on God and God's kingdom, our needs will be met in ways beyond what we imagine. And as we put God at the center, we're naturally called to share. And this is what brings us to the work of our Christian Generosity Committee and our Together We Do Good campaign. When we trust in God's provision, we can open our hearts and share from the abundance we've been given, knowing that God's kingdom always has enough for all. In this season of harvest and thanksgiving, let's remember that together we can make a difference, caring for others and serving our community. So this Thanksgiving, let's not just give thanks for the harvest, but for the trust that God calls us into. A trust that when we put God at the center of our lives, our needs will be met. Let's strive to live with open hearts, sharing what we have and trusting God's provision for tomorrow. So as we begin today, trusting more and worrying less, and making room for God to work in our lives and the world around us. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'd now like to invite you to join with me in prayer as we pray for the church, our world, our community, those in need, and those who have departed. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on Harvest Sunday. Gracious God, we give you thanks for bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for Todd, Bishop of Huron, Anne, our Metropolitan and Acting Primate, Christopher, National Indigenous Bishop, and Marinez, Bishop of Amazonia. In our Diocese of Huron, we pray for the parishes in the London Deanery, for their clergy and people. Inspire leaders of the Church to proclaim your mighty deeds that your saving faith may be known to all. God of the harvest, in your mercy hear us. Splendid God, we give you thanks for land and water, seed time and harvest. Break down boundaries we construct between ourselves and the rest of your creation. Bring renewal and restoration to places affected by pollution, deforestation and natural disasters. God of the harvest, in your mercy hear us. Mighty God, we give you thanks for those in our community, nation, and world who work for justice and peace. Guide those who govern to act on behalf of those marginalized by race, ethnicity, and religion. God of the harvest, in your mercy, hear us. Pour out favor this day on those who are afflicted and feel far removed from you. We pray for the sick and those in need of prayer. In our own parish this week, we pray especially for Bill, Kath, Lindsay, Braden, Hudson, Marion, Stella, Jenny, Kaylee, Janice, Andrew, John, Doreen, Mary, and Mary Rose. We pray also for those experiencing ongoing long-term health concerns, praying for Pat, Carol, Karen, Tracy, Brian, Alex, Vicki, Miriam, Max, Norma, Charlotte, Aubrey, Erlina, Claude and Carol, Marie, Kim, Janet, Jan, Charlene, Bud, Amy, Betty, Ray, Jason, Mark, Jim, and Odile. Send companions to those in need who will show them that you are ever near. God of the harvest, in your mercy, hear us. We give you thanks for the healing ministries of this congregation. Equip those who visit care and pray for the sick. Help our parish to build up relations 
among people of different beliefs and backgrounds. Use the cooperation between this congregation and others in our community to reveal your goodness. God of the harvest, in your mercy, hear us. Eternal God, we give you thanks for your faithful people who have gone before us and your, to your glory. Renew our trust in your eternal promises of mercy, redemption, and new life. God of the harvest, in your mercy, hear us. With thankful and grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to join with me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Creator of the fruitful earth, you made us stewards of all things. Give us grateful hearts so that all, for all your goodness, and steadfast wills to use your bounty well, that the whole human family today and in generations to come may with us give thanks for the riches of your creation. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. And now to conclude our time together, I will give you God's blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, and remain with you always. Amen.